Well, hey guys, I am uh, getting ready. We are going over to some friends for dinner tonight and I was kind of playing around with a new eye look. So as you can see, I've already done it on one of my eyes. So I thought that I would just hop on here and kind of bring y'all along with me as I do the second eye because I know sometimes it's helpful. Many of you have told me that you love the tutorials. Um, because it just helps to see and to watch and I get it. I understand I'm the same way. So as you can see, I've already done my makeup, um, done my brows, did some cheek color, tried a new cheek color today. Thanks to one of my sweet customers, Peggy. She came over the other day and wanted a new blush and we pulled out this desert. It's called Desert Rose and it's just a really pretty rose color. It has just, I think you can see just a little bit of shimmer and, um, I tried it today and I love it. So, see, you can you can be in Mary Kay for 30 years like me and not have ever tried a shade of something. So, it's always fun to try new things. All right. And then I've got a little bit of highlighter going here, did my brows like I said, and for lips, I want to show you what I did. I went ahead and pulled a new light nude lip pencil. It's, pulled, meaning it's so nice when you can go right downstairs and reach into your own store and get product when you're running out of it. But I lined in this light nude, and the whole purpose of lining is just to give your lips some definition. Maybe you have thin lips um, that you want to just kind of accentuate um, but just gently following the outer edge of your lip line and of course I always always start with lip primer time wise age fighting lip primer it's just kind of a white goes on kind of clear just almost not even waxy it almost feels dry but that primer fills in all the little fine lines around your lip. I do it just on the very edge outside the lines. Um, and then I do primer and I usually fill in with, with um, liner rather. I usually fill in with liner because then that just helps your lipstick to stay a little better. And then this, honestly, you guys, is my all-time favorite lipstick. It's part of the um, Gel Semi Shine line and it's called... Let me make sure I'm telling you the right thing. It's called Rosewood, and it's just a really beautiful rosy nude. And I've actually broken this one off, and I'm, I just, I can't bear to throw him away. It's too sad. So I'm kind of, it's kind of wonky in here. So I have to be careful when I put it on. Yep, see there it went, but it's okay. I'll just keep using it. See how pretty, it's just, now we have other nudes. In fact, we have this new subdued nude, which we've been talking a lot about lately. And as you can see, it's just a really light skin color. But notice the difference between these. This is almost too light for me. Like it almost doesn't even show up because my skin is so fair. Maybe with someone with a deeper skin tone, this would be gorgeous, but look, there's quite a bit of difference between that. So this one just, gives more of the pinky rose nude that I like so much. Um, so I really love this rosewood. And then if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of gloss over it, which is what I'll probably do, any shade of gloss. You could do a little shimmer with sheer illusion. You could keep it nude by putting like soft nude over it. Um, I don't have any of my glosses handy, but that's what I'll probably do. Anyway, on to eyes, because that's what I really wanted to show you, is we're just gonna use a few simple, quick products. I'm gonna show you a really fast eye look, very simple, starting with Mary Kay's Light Beam Liquid Eyeshadow. I love our liquid eyeshadows because they go on so smooth and creamy, and they have primer built into them, so you don't need to use a, uh, any other eye primer underneath. So it's just really a perfect base to almost any eyeshadow look that you do. Now you could use our cream eye color brush to smooth this in, or because I'm showing you quick, easy, simple, I'm just using my finger, okay? 
All right, then I'm just gonna use, sorry y'all, I feel like I've got a little hair or something there that's itching at me. All right, I'm gonna take a clean eye blending brush and I'm going to, I'm gonna show you my palette here. I'm gonna pick up some of this color right here. It's called Espresso. It looks really dark there and it is. It's just kind of a dark brown gray and it's matte. And always knock the excess color. I'm just gonna kind of start up here on this brow bone kind of in the crease and I'm just gonna work this in in just kind of circles and bring it down into this outer edge of my eye, okay? And notice it looks like a lot, right? It looks like somebody punched me in the eye. So then what do we do? We get our clean blending brush, so important. Got my little scrubber thing here that lets me get rid of all color on the brush. And then I'm gonna come in here with a clean brush and I'm just gonna blend the heck out of this. And this is where you get that pretty seamless um, eye color look that we all want is it's in the blending y'all. Some of y'all just get too impatient and are like, I can't make my eyes look like that. Yeah, you can. You just gotta work with clean products, clean. Some of y'all need to wash your brushes and you know who you are. And you need to be willing to take the time to blend. Okay, so then the next color I'm gonna pick up is one of my favorite. It is called Rose Gold. It's just a shimmery, rosy, pinky color. And I'm just gonna lay that all over this center part, okay? And that's it, you guys. Just simple and easy. I'm done. Now, what I am going to add to this, though, is I always dip my brush in something like this, some some kind of a white, shimmery eyeshadow, like a crystalline or a moonstone. I think this one's moonstone. And I always, always just pop, pop, boop, 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 pop it right there in the corner of my eye. See that pop of light and bright that just opens your eye? And then I am gonna take a straight edge brush and pick up some of that rose gold and just gently run a little bit underneath because it's so subtle, doesn't make a huge difference. But once you put mascara on, I promise, you'll see the difference. Okay, then I'm looking for my deep brown eyeliner. Okay, and I'm gonna gently, not pull, just kind of brace my eyelid there. Let's see if I can do this. It's easier to do it in my makeup mirror than it is. Hang on, let me put the magnifying side on because since I'm not wearing my glasses right now, sorry y'all, I am blind as a dang bat. Okay, we're gonna try to make this work. Notice I'm not trying to draw one line. I'm doing little dashes, just little dashes as close to my line as I can get. And as I get to the inner corner, I'm even kind of coming up underneath, almost like a, like a tight line effect. And I've just done that um, as close to the lash line as I can get. And then I am gonna come back in here with my concealer brush and I'm just going to run that up there to just kind of clean that up. Anything that might have fallen under there, gonna clean that up. Then I'm going to take some of the eyeliner that we have that's in a, um, a it's a gel and it's in a little pot. Um, now, before you ask me, and I probably shouldn't do this, we only have this in black. For a season, they did make it in this deep brown color, this espresso, and I wish they'd do it again. But because this stuff lasts forever, I still have some. I'm just using a straight little brush. And then I just like to come back over the pencil with a little bit of this really smooth. 
espresso and then use it to make a little bit of a tail, just a little bit, not a big tail, just a little. And see how that just, because my eyelashes are so sparse and so blonde, every little trick that I can do to make them look thicker is a good thing. Because these are my lashes, these are not false. So I'm gonna show you how I did this. I'm gonna layer two mascaras. One is the Fanorama, which has, remember you always scrape it off. It has the little tiny teeth. Now the first thing you're gonna do, and I did it earlier, is you're gonna curl your lashes. You're gonna go as far in as you can and crimp, hold it for three seconds, then walk it out. Then crimp it again for three seconds, then walk it out and crimp it again for three seconds. And that way you have lots of little bends in your eyelashes that are gonna help it hold that curl, okay? But for now, I'm gonna apply just one good coat. Tell you what, I'm gonna hold my little magnifying mirror right there, there we go, now I can see. I think this one's magnified at like 5,000 times, no, not really, but as blind as I am, this is 50 plus makeup problems, right? then this mascara is absolutely perfect for doing your lower lashes because it has these little tiny teeth and it, it fans out at the end, at the very end of the wand and lets you really get up here. Oh, I just made a mess. So no worries, I want you to see that I did that. See, boop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that alone and then we're gonna come back in a minute and just flick it off once it dries, okay? So we've got everything separated with the Fanorama. Then we're gonna come in with, not lipstick. <laughs> we're not gonna come in with lipstick, where is it? We're gonna come in with our lash intensity, okay? And this is a little sample. This is a big tube with a big handle ordinarily. And it's the one that's got this big daddy, gigantic, brush on the end and remember you put the flat side first and deposit the mascara onto the lashes then you turn it over to the long side and you comb this is what i call my spider mascara because this gives you like 200 percent thicker lashes and like 80% longer lashes. It's not fibers, which I'm glad because then you don't have little pieces of stuff falling off, but it's just really a thickening, lengthening formula. Something that you want to spend a little time with. You don't just slap it on and go. You kind of work with it. Now, let me show you. I'm just going to take a little cotton round. There. Just flick that off. Abby, my daughter, taught me that a long time ago. Don't mess with it until it dries. And then just flick it off with a Q-tip or something. Okay. But see how pretty this look is? It's simple. It's You've just got your, your base coat of, is it light beam? I want to say starlight. Light beam all over. Then we did espresso on the outer corner. And then we just did rose gold along the lid and then we popped some bright um, white I think it's moonstone in the corner and then I'm going to do a little gloss and I'm good to go and then at the very end I like to give myself I like to go over one more time with some setting powder just to kind of make everything matte us oily girls don't ever want to be shiny we like to be matte okay then I'm gonna kinda get my hair out of the way, cover it up, and I'm gonna spray four times. Oh, that feels so good. That is like hairspray for your face. I, I can't live without the setting spray. It is the best thing ever. And I'll give you a little trick and tip with it is if you use it in layers, like I will do, for example, First I did um, concealer, then I did um, a CC cream. 
um, and with this brush, I applied it all over my face, and then I sprayed it. Then I did a layer of setting powder, Mary Kay's new setting powder with the big, full brush, and that just set everything, made everything go matte, okay? And then I did blush, highlighter, brows, um, eyes, lips, and then at the end, like I said, one more little setting and then, um, oh, but backing up, I did a layer of setting spray after, what is this, CC cream. Then after I did my powder, I did a layer. Then I did my makeup, I did another layer. And then um, I did my makeup except for lashes because you don't want to spray this while your mascara is wet or it can kind of, you know, get in the way. But isn't this a pretty look? Comment down below and let me know, would you try this look? Is this something that you would wear? Um, what do you like best about it? And if you have any questions at all for me about makeup application, especially for 50 plus faces, um, be sure to shoot me a message. I, I love to um, teach skincare and makeup application. I love to share with you my knowledge and wisdom from studying with um, professional makeup artist Robert Jones four different times now. I've studied extensively with him and know how to give you tips on exactly where to put your um, eyeshadow. You know, there's a specific place that you put it based on your eye shape and um, how to, to deal with some of the issues of more mature skin, like the crepiness that we start to get the fine lines and wrinkles, the thinning um, underneath our eyes. You want to go a little more light handed. You think, you think you're wanting to use more to cover up as you mature, but honestly, you guys, it's, you're actually less is better. Less is more. Um, I find that, you know, using less product, less layers, um, and more light handed gives you a fresher, more youthful look. So, Okay, hope you enjoyed this and um, would love again for you to make a comment below. It kind of triggers the algorithm of this crazy when I share this on Facebook. Um, but if you're not on Facebook, I hope you're enjoying me throwing these videos out here on this YouTube channel that I've had forever and haven't put anything on in years. But um, I really do like the tutorials. So we'll do a skincare one soon, I promise. Okay, you guys, have a great day, evening, whatever.